Wes, you're working on Slasher Volume 1, Summer Camp, right. um, a game which, while not directly Friday the 13th, sure has a lot of the flavor of Friday the 13th without kind of you know, being right there on the nose. Correct. I mean, that's kind of what this set out to be was, you know, I, I, it was my love letter to Friday the 13th. It was just so coincidental and serendipitous that he got my love letter. Yeah, and Sean, I mean, you, 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 you have that license that could allow this to become Friday the 13th. Yeah. I mean, this is better than peanut butter and chocolate. Really, it's chocolate and chocolate. Just told from the other side, we were fooling around with trying to work out the, what started out to be a Friday the 13th website, and um, then it grew into you know something a little bit bigger. And we, in the course of doing that, said we got to have a game, and we've been talking about Friday the 13th games for 20 years, and um, there, was, there was never a, a particularly good idea. And then one of our friends who. Uh, uh, runs a, a gaming magazine and knows a lot of a lot of people. Um, said, "Well, I'd like to I'd like to look into that, but what we'd really like to have is is a game where you are, you know, you could be Jason or you could be the camper." But and then he told me the the specs in, in game talk, and I said, yeah, "All right, no <laughs> idea what you're talking about." <laughs> and it was about uh, I guess about two months later. Um, you and Steve hooked up, yep. and he came back and said, these guys are making a game, which is exactly what I would like to make, and there's got to be a way we can pull it together. And as luck would have it, <laughs> we pulled it together, and here we are. What I find that's really interesting about this is when you started out making the first film, how small you, your team was, how small your budget was, yeah. uh, just that that almost family type of, of, of mentality from the actors to the, to the grips to everyone that you had there, which was very limited. You know, people were pulling double duty, wearing multiple hats on mm -hmm. that kind of project. It, it's so interesting to see the parallels to that, to what we're doing with our small team and wearing multiple hats, because that's what we, I mean, we're an indie team. We set out, we started making summer camp and, and we, we had our, we had exactly, we knew what we wanted from a design perspective. We were already sitting down with the dev team and starting to build. So it's just really neat to see that similarity there, I think is really, it's really cool. Yeah, I think it's, an, it, it's um, the movie business um, almost has been reborn into the game business in that, in that it's the Wild West mm -hmm. and, and there aren't, you know, there aren't any particular rules that you have to follow. If you can make a really good movie and people like it, great. If you make a really good game and people like it, great. But you don't have to spend $40 million to make it. Right. And so the, 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 it's, uh, it's, very, it's very similar in terms of the risk reward. Right. Friday the 13th is your, your baby. Right. You know? And granted, you've taken some liberties. Jason has gone to space. He's gone to New York. <laughs> but what are the things that you sort of need to see to be reassured that that the game or, or you know would would be honoring the legacy and would be respecting sort of what you've created over a good decade? What happened with Friday the Thirteenth is is almost anti dramatic because Jason became almost the star of a franchise, and what he does as a star is wax people, <laughs> right now. That is contrary to everything you ever learned about dramatic structure. You know, you're supposed to have a hero and somebody you empathize with and that you care about. And then you put that person or those people in jeopardy. And then you're with them. You ride along with them and hope that they make it. And then usually they do. And then you have a happy ending. Right. And I've, I've seen so many Friday the 13th scripts which start out that way. And, you know, we're designed to find out who uh, you know, uh, who really cares about what and what their dreams are and you say, therefore we're really going to care about her when she goes wandering in the woods without uh, asking permission <laughs> or whatever. And nobody cared. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I discovered that, that uh, my son put it best that when he said that uh, in, in Friday the 13th movies and in horror movies in general, it's not that you create people that you care so much about, but you create people that you'd like to see whacked. <laughs> you know, and as a result, you know, that the high school quarterback or, you know, uh, and whatever. And the audience identifies with those people too, because they grew up around 
around them. Of course, them. they're usually extreme examples of, but you still can identify when you look, you go, I remember that jerk in high school. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I hope he does get, he's gonna get whacked. Oh, yeah. There's no fucking way. <laughs> Dead, Jason operates in that world, and it's sort of an upside down world, but he is, he is the boogeyman. He is the unstoppable force that, that arrogant people try to stop but ultimately they can't stop him. And I, I don't know why that's so fascinating, but it is. Mm -hmm. So Wes, um, you're making this game that's honoring Friday the 13th. Right. You suddenly get the license for Friday the 13th. Um, is it a sense of just incredible jubilation or are you suddenly burdened with it, with a sense of responsibility you know, now? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I mean, that's literally how, that's literally how it happened was when that opportunity came up, I went from you know, the, the, the high fives, jumping up and down kind of thing with the team and everybody being excited to, you know, kind of after the, the smiles start to go back down to normal sort of face, now you're like, you, you start to feel the weight. You start to, to understand what that license means. Not only are our, our team have, is filled with these, you know, fans and people that understand the license, that understand that. Uh, and, and, and being huge fans of it, but I know that there are these super fans out there that are even much larger than we are that know so much more about the canon of that than 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 we possibly do. Hell, they even know more than, than you know about the canon. But it's when you have those eyes looking at the thing that you're making uh, through that lens, it's it's such a burden now comparatively to hey, it's our small little team and we're just like doing this homage to a bunch of cool slasher movies. I mean, Sean, do, do you see it that way? Do you think the fans are gonna probably be almost giving stronger guidance to these guys on the game than even you would? Yeah, I think that, uh, I, I, I think that the mandate is for something so big and visceral mm. and so involving. And I think that the challenge is to, to keep the audience more involved than they can be in a, in a regular movie. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the challenge and that's the delight. And allowing the, the player to fill the shoes of Jason. I mean, <laughs> that's, it's not, it's, not only, it's not only a big responsibility for the player, because if you really think about that, like you, it's like you're given the keys to yeah. the best sports car you've ever known. And, and, and for this moment, for this 20 minutes, you're the only person that gets to drive it. And everyone else that's in that area understands what that means when they see you as Jason. They know how to react. They know the role to automatically play. There's a little bit of that responsibility that then falls on the fan base. They had to go, wait, wait a minute. I'm actually Jason. I'm in Camp Crystal Lake. This is my machete. Like, Holy shit! You know, like <laughs> I can't wait for that moment. Summer camp had all of this, all of this, this stuff that we wanted to use, and that was, it, it involved active participation, and mm -hmm. and it it took it took the experience to what we hoped was going to be this new big ballsy uh, level. Mm. And we definitely in in finding you know locating the talent that I, when I you know first went with and talked with Tom about this, and then. Uh, and that immediately uh, led to me meeting uh, Harry Manfredini, um, and then uh, ultimately getting getting Kane on board. You know, that's all. That was all long before you know you and I yeah. ever had a chance to meet. I was at a convention, and Harry and Kane were both there, mm. and independently they were talking about doing this other thing, this summer camp thing. Yeah. And 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 I said, really? Well, oh, that's kind of interesting. Hmm. <laughs>